We're in the north of Norway and we're going northern lights chasing and there's a really small chance of seeing them today like 15 20% at best and I'm gonna show you right now how we got to that idea how we're at this 20% chance the apps I use to find the northern lights and then we'll get to the part where we see if we find them I'm coming at you from the future to talk about these three apps that I mentioned back in the past I said that there was like a small chance of seeing the Northern Lights. I want to show you guys how I got to that opinion using these three different apps. So the first app is called Aurora Pro. Aurora Pro shows you the Aurora forecast. Generally, anything below three isn't going to be spectacular. Anything three and above, there's a good chance. If it's like four or five, the Northern Lights are going to pop off. There's also a cool map that shows you where the auroras might be visible. And the auroras are pretty predictable. You can predict them based on sun flares that happen. And because of the predictability, you can actually predict auroras like two weeks in advance. So Aurora Pro has the availability of a long-term forecast available as well, which is great. The day that we went out in Tromso, it said there was KP3s. But we're so far north that KP3 is still probably pretty decent. Aurora Pro also has a cloud coverage estimate, but I don't find it to be 100% accurate, so I like to use app number two, which is called Meteor Earth. And Meteor Earth is something a lot of landscape photographers use. It basically shows you an overview of the area or the entire world of what the cloud cover is gonna be like. Low level, mid level, high level, or in general. And I like to use Meteor Earth, it's pretty spot on. You kinda just hover over your area and you press play, and you'll be able to see the cloud cover and maybe potentially find gaps in the weather or areas with clear sky. So on the night we went out, it looked like there was about an hour gap of cloud cover, and that's what I was hoping to hit. Finally, of course, if you want to see the northern lights, you need dark skies. Or at least you're gonna see them better the darker the skies are. So the third app I like to use is called the Light Pollution Map, or LPM. And basically it just shows a map of your area. Red means there's a lot of light pollution, yellow and green are okay, Blue means there's very dark skies and very little uh, light pollution. And then if there's no color overlay, it means it's dark. It means there's little to absolutely no light pollution at all. So based on these three things, I looked at the map of Trumzo and I figured a place called Oldervik would be perfect. It's dark, it faces north, there was an hour long gap in the clouds, and yeah, we should have KP3 up that way. So when we arrived it was cloudy, but we waited about a half an hour for that gap to arrive and this happened. So we made it into the field and amazingly after waiting for about, I don't know, about an hour, the northern lights kicked off just for a minute or two. Amazingly, I shot the northern lights. It's a really simple composition. But one of the really important things to know when you're shooting northern lights is you can't go crazy with that 30 second exposure. The northern lights move so quickly, but when you do that it kind of blurs out the lights and you get this green blob in the sky. If it's bright enough and you can get your exposure down to something like 8 seconds or 5 seconds, you get really, really crisp lights and that's where you get the really beautiful images. So I think the lights have already disappeared on us, but we're going to sit here again and, and hope they come back and maybe I'll try a little time lapse. <laughs> when you clap to sync the audio, if you clap and it syncs the audio, it always scares Jody in the background. Anyways, I'm back here on the laptop and I've got the Northern Lights images that we shot back in the past, back in Norway, on the screen. And I'm going to show you kind of quickly how the editing happens because I honestly don't think there's that much too complicated with editing Northern Lights, but I am going to show you just like what it looks like because it is definitely different when you see them on the screen as when you see them in real life. The, the camera just picks up so much more than the human eye. So I'm just going to grab, let's grab the most normal image from the entire batch, which was probably this one. So in the field, I mentioned that you should try to get your northern light shots to about five or eight seconds. And the reason is because of this. You see these lines here in the image um, in the northern lights where there's like movement. And let me open another image up that has another example of that. 
I think it's this one. You can see, and this image is loading, you can see these lines. The northern lights move so fast that if you shoot like a 30 second exposure, it just turns into a blob of green in the sky. You want to capture this movement and these lines in the image. So that's why it's so important, I think, to try to shoot a five to eight second exposure, something around there. Um, it was so bright out because we had the moon behind us lighting everything up that we got pretty lucky. It was ISO 1600, um, 24 millimeters f2.8, and five seconds for this shot. You can see the northern lights aren't super powerful. Later in the evening they got a little bit more intense and we got images like, uh, like this one. But early on it was pretty calm. Um, at least to the eye. To the eye we were seeing them but it wasn't like boom. They were out there. So I'm going to take you through the edit of this image. You can see I actually haven't really touched it much here. Um, I don't think I put any filters on it either. I did. I put a grad filter on. Okay, so I'll get to that. So I'm going to just hit reset. And I'm going to walk you through how I edit an image like this. So right away you can see it's flat because this is the raw image. So I like vibrance. So I, the first thing I always do is bring up the vibrance. With night stuff, I'm finding dehaze is really effective. So I've been adding like plus 15 in dehaze. In my opinion, it's all about clarity when it comes to stars. You bring up that clarity and the stars and the northern lights kind of get sharper without bringing in noise to the image. I like to bring out the whites as well because it really brightens up the image. I'm not going to touch the shadows. I might even bring up the highlights to brighten everything again. And then I'm going to bring up the contrast a little bit. Now, I can tell you right now the reason I used the filter was for a grad. Because you can see how overblown all this snow is down here um, where the street lights were on. So I just used a grad like this to just darken that area and not overblow it. So I brought down the highlights, something like that probably. And then honestly, that's really all you need to do to a Northern Lights photo if you shoot it right. Um, you can go down and play with things like the luminance. And so you can see by playing with the luminance, it really, uh, it affects how bright that part of the image is. So the greens, they are green. If you want them to look like Ninja Turtle green, you can darken them a bit. Or if you can, you can brighten them a little bit by doing something like that. And the aquas are apparently just the edges. So I think I'm just going to bring out the brightness of the green a little bit. Um, saturation, again, you can make these greens ridiculous. Like that, lime green. And it's only going to touch the green. So bring up the, the saturation a bit on the greens. And then hue. If your northern lights seem like the color is a bit off, you can go into here and change that. For me, I think the northern lights are pretty spot on on my shot, so it's fine. I think one of the things, again, you really need to look at when you're shooting northern lights is the white balance. Because if your white balance is off, it's something like that, the whole image is going to look wrong. So um, try to get your white balance right. I did a whole video on how to get the white balance right if you're struggling. But when there's snow around, it's really easy to just grab the, the eyedrop tool, walk up onto some snow, click the snow and then it'll get it pretty spot on for you. So that's the Northern Lights. Those are the three apps I use for uh, finding the Northern Lights or getting a good chance to find the Northern Lights. And a walkthrough while I was really sick in Norway of shooting the Northern Lights. We didn't get a crazy showing and this was our only showing the entire time we were in Norway. But I was uh, feeling pretty grateful we saw them in general on our first night in Norway. So um, that was fun. On the next episode, I'm heading to Wales. So I guess I'll see you guys there. Peace.